Good morning. I am here again talking about the book of Acts. We're at the end of the 13th chapter and uh, we are following Paul and Barnabas. Uh, John was traveling with them, but he gave up. And so Paul and Barnabas are in Antioch. Um, and Antioch is a big city. Got lots of different folks. Um, it's a crossroads, originally founded in 300 BC by the Greeks when uh, Alexander the Great showed up. And then later, uh, Rome took over in the 6th century BC. So it's had a long history. For those of us in 2021, um, it's hard for us to imagine ancient cities that are that old. If you figure that the United States is only 200 years old, um, it really is fascinating. So lots of different people from lots of different areas had come into um, Antioch and there were Jewish synagogues and that's where Jewish folks met on Saturday and they discussed the scriptures and invited um, traveling preachers in who were Jewish and that was true of Paul and Barnabas. And so last time I talked about uh, Paul's long, long sermon that reviewed the faith history of the people of God, the chosen people, Jewish folks, and showed how it all pointed towards Jesus Christ and that Jesus Christ had superseded um, even King David, who was highly held and regarded. So uh, all of this is, um, you know, in some ways it's news to them, although they probably heard inklings. They haven't perhaps heard at this point a complete redaction of the history of uh, the Jewish folks and that uh, Jewish folks are saying now God is doing something new and his name was Jesus Christ and he was killed and raised from the dead. So all of these things, whether it's, you know, Jesus is the son of God, which again, that's huge and really inflammatory, or that um, uh, they were, um, that, that God was uh, raising him from the dead. So all of these things are huge. <laughs> noticing that absolutely no one's watching and I'm good with that because probably somebody will click in uh, later today. So I'm going to read from Acts 13. Um, and again, Paul and Barnabas, it's Sabbath and they were in the synagogue. So when the service was over, Paul and Barnabas were invited back to preach again next Sabbath. As the meeting broke up, a good many Jews and converts to Judaism went along with Paul and Barnabas, who urged them in long conversations to stick with what they had started, this living in and by God's grace. When the next Sabbath came around, practically the whole city showed up to hear the word of God. Some of the Jews, seeing the crowds, went wild with jealousy. They tore into Paul, contradicting everything he was saying and making an ugly scene. But Paul and Barnabas didn't back down. Standing their ground, they said, it was required that God's word be spoken first to all of you, the Jews. But seeing that you don't want, you want no part of it, we've made it quite clear to you that no taste or inclination for eternal life. The door is now open to all outsiders and we're on our way through following orders, doing what God commanded when he said, I've set you up as a light to all nations. You'll proclaim salvation to the four winds and the seven seas. When the non-Jews outsiders heard this, they could hardly believe their good fortune. All were marked out for real life, put their trust in God. They honored God's word by receiving that life. And this message of salvation spread like wildfire through all the region. Some of the Jews convinced the most respected women and leading men of the town that their precious way of life was about to be destroyed. Alarmed, they turned on Paul and Barnabas and forced them to leave. Paul and Barnabas shrugged their shoulders and went on to the next town, Icodium, brimming with joy in the Holy Spirit, two happy disciples. So um, I, I just want to talk about the consistency in human nature. 
when our position in life is threatened, we often get angry and lash out. And that I think is what's happening with those Jews who had been in command and in power uh, up until Barnabas and Paul walk through the door. Um, again, there, you know, there's no social media, there's no newspaper, there's no telegraph, there's no nothing. So being in Antioch meant that they might not have heard the fullness of what had happened in Jerusalem. They might have heard rumors about this prophet, Jesus, but Jesus had never gone that far in his travels. He had always stayed right around um, Jerusalem. So here's the news uh, that's going out through this Holy Spirit that God has given to the disciples. And these towns are now hearing what God has done in the person of Jesus of Nazareth, who became the Christ. And those in power, those who have had it their way, those who say, this is what reality is and this is what reality isn't, um, see that their word, their authority, their position is threatened. And so they uh, get the crowds to go against Paul and Barnabas. There are some who believed. And what is really galling to the people who are in power in Judaism is that these, again, Paul is a respected Jew and Barnabas probably is as well. And so for these respected Jewish leaders to say, actually, you guys don't want in on this deal? That's okay. God is opening it up to everyone. That is amazing. Um, I know that we don't see it as amazing because we're used to, you know, believe in Jesus and you have eternal life. But for those of this generation, the chosen people were born into Judaism. And although you could believe and you could follow the ways of Judaism, um, whether it was by just treating each other fairly, <laughs> you could read through all of Proverbs that just talks about fair dealing and caring for the community and how to live in right relationship. Basically, that's what the Ten Commandments are about, how to live in right relationship with community. And so there were Jewish, non-Jewish folks who were following that way of life and becoming what was called proselytes. But at the same time, everybody was really clear that they weren't real Jews, that they could follow and they could believe, but they still were not born as the chosen people. And so they were not part of the chosen people. And so here's Paul and Barnabas saying, yeah, well, <laughs> God, God's okay with that. God's welcoming them into the family, even though you've kept them up arm's length. And there were um, particularly women who, uh, again, this is Antioch, it's a big town, women who had found a fairer deal in terms of how they lived their life in Judaism and had taken up that religious life. Not, not religious life, but that way of being in community. They didn't become nuns or anything, I'm not saying that, but they became women who followed those rules and they had husbands who followed those rules. And these women had become powerful because again, in the Jewish law, although it might not seem that way to 21st century folks, they were dealt in a much fairer and kinder and more equitable way under Jewish law. So there we are. So the women who had power and uh, some financial resources, let's face it, um, the Jewish leaders got those ladies stayed, stirred up along with their menfolk and they made sure that Paul and Barnabas were sent running out of town. But not before, there was a community of faith that was growing, that the Christians, um, people who had become entered this reform movement of Judaism and had become Christians in the midst of that. They were excited about being this new kind of faith. And you'll notice here that, um, I'm reading the message, which I always am, but they're talking about eternal life. And for me, it's important to remember that this wasn't just about, um, again, our life after our death. It wasn't just about 
what happens after our mortal life ceases in terms of eternal life. But eternal life also meant ongoing, momentary to moment, daily relationship with God. That there was a sense of knowing God and being with God. And um, that that eternal life was this peace and grace, um, right relationship with God that was extended through the life and death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so because Paul and Barnabas have been able to tell that message, because lots of folks have heard the message, because even more folks were now forming new community out of that synagogue into a Christian community, they're happy. They're like, yep, that's okay. Not everybody's gonna believe. <laughs> You know, I kind of wish I'd gotten that memo earlier in my ministry because I always were so intense that anyone should hear and listen and believe and that if I just said the story right, if I told them correctly, then certainly they would believe this obvious good news. But all through the New Testament, and particularly in the book of Acts, um, these disciples are like, okay, I did what I could do. I told my message. I let them know what God's plan was. I let them know what God's love was. Oh, praise God, somebody's watching me. Hey, May. <laughs> but um, anyway, uh, that that was, um, that they were not concerned. They simply knew that their job, their mission, their call was to tell the story of Jesus Christ and invite folks into relationship with God and that love that was there. And if people didn't listen, and even if authorities were stirred up against them, and even if they were thrown out of town, that wasn't the that wasn't the deal. The deal was that they had said what they wanted to say, and they had uh, followed God's word. <laughs> I remember one time years ago, I was uh, we used to have uh, suppers at a church where I was, and we would sell tickets. And so I went to the um, district superintendent, my person who is an authority over me, and I said, so I've got tickets for our, probably it was a turkey supper, whatever it was, and who knows how much they were ahead. But anyway, I said, so um, you're going to buy a couple of tickets. And he looked at the date, and he said, um, <laughs> no, I, I can't that night. I, I um, have another commitment. I said, well, that's not the point, really, is it? <laughs> The point is that you support the church and you buy the tickets and whether or not you can show up is not the point. I think it's important for me to keep the point in mind, the point of what God's love is, that we continue to do all that we can do to support the church as often as we can, that we continue to tell the story of how much God loves us and the new life we found in God, even when others will not listen even when um, people want us to kind of leave and shut up, it doesn't matter. Um, so those things are what matters. I'm trying to figure out my phone, but anyway. So the last thing I wanna say is I saw uh, in a catalog that I've gotten too many of during this season that um, there was a cute little plaque thing, you know, as uh, little sayings are said. <laughs> and the, the saying on the plaque was, just love everybody. I'll sort them out later. Signed, God. I think for me, that's the lesson of Acts. That's the lesson of Jesus Christ. Um, you're, we're not required to, we cannot make someone else believe. Even Paul and Barnabas an older, empowered Holy Spirit could not make others believe. They also could not convince others not to do violence against them. So they said, it's all good. We'll move on to the next place and see if someone will listen. I hope and imagine that they also prayed for those in that community that they left behind. It is amazing, the power of God not only to spread the good news as it was spread through the ancient world, but also to heal us and make us whole. 
and also to help us to see the vision of God's world in this world. I want us to remember, or I want me to remember, that the people who had power to protect were the angriest and the least willing to listen. And so I hope for me and for us that if we are aggravated by something or feel like something isn't right, that we take time to take it to God and make sure that we're not protecting our power position, but rather seeing those people, whomever they are, through God's love and God's grace. We continue uh, next week in the 14th chapter of Acts. Uh, prayers and blessings upon you. And hopefully I've done this thing right because um, anyway, hopefully we'll keep on working on it. Take care. Enjoy this fall crisp day. Bye.